anyways, we're in the process of negotiating them out and figuring out who we're going to take. Um, you know, who's one of them is actually, how do you turn this thing on? One of them's countering their own offer, meaning they wrote an offer, but then when we told them, what, you think that's funny? A lot of people teaching this business have only been in hot markets they don't understand. Like, since 2009 and 10, the last eight, nine years, whatever, um, it's been a steady climb. No one knows what it's like when, thing, when the bottom falls out. I do. So what I'm telling you is it's never slow if you're constantly evolving and making moves and doing more than it takes. Another thing, fresh on my mind, I was just um, coaching actually with one of my one-on-one -on -one students and she's gonna watch this video, she'll know who she is. But I, do, I thought it was such a great lesson that I wanna highlight it to everybody. Um, by the way, I have a small, small, small group of people that I go on Voxer with, um, that I coach, you know, back and forth, walkie-talkie. Um, they pay me to coach them personally, to expedite um, results and it's beautiful. Um, because when you're working directly with me, magic happens. Anyways, she was, she's in, uh, she's down south and she's newer. So she's listening to like what other wholesalers and other, you know, rehabbers and just other people in her town are saying, yeah, it's really slow right now. The deals are slim. And she's like believing it. And I don't want her to, because like I said, I'm doing deal after deal. I'm trying to tell her and I'm telling all you guys, I'm doing deal after deal. You guys see me here. but. Everyone I talk to, yeah, I can't find any deals or things are slow right now. And you know, what happens is if you're buying into that, you're just basically um, settling with, I guess, you're, so what you're telling me is your actions are calibrated to their actions. You're like comparing what they're doing and that's not what you want. You're an entrepreneur doing what you do and I just don't want you comparing to the actions of others. The reason things are slow for so-and-so and so-and-so is because they're not doing what it takes to be to make to do deals it's slow because of what they're doing not because of the market okay and that's where you're gonna that's where you have a benefit of listening to me who's been doing this almost 20 years i've been in hot markets i've been in slow markets i've been in busts okay a lot of people teaching this business have only been in hot markets they don't understand like since 2009 and 10 the last eight nine years whatever um it's been a steady climb no one knows what it's like when thing, when the bottom falls out. I do. So what I'm telling you is it's never slow if you're constantly evolving and making moves and doing more than it takes. You know, if looking at five deals a week isn't enough, look at 10, look at 20. Your market dictates when enough is enough. Not Nick. Like I always tell people, I'm not telling you to do more work or to market more or, or look, talk to more sellers. Your market is. Your market's telling you that. And the market is the boss in all industries. You design the coolest t-shirt and nobody buys it, but then some schmuck designs a t-shirt you think is ugly as hell and he's selling it like mad. The market, it's, who cares if you think your t-shirt's better? The market tells you which one's better, okay? That's the way business and entrepreneurship works. The market is the boss. Your opinion is meaningless. So. You know, even a while back, I remember a specific student. He's like, Nick, I did work. I, I did all this work and I'm not getting paid. Get out of the W-2 employee psychology. Everyone is trained to work, start work on Monday, put in their time, and Friday get handed the paycheck. That's employee psychology. That's not the way entrepreneurship works. You know, and if that's too hard for you or harsh for you, maybe you're not ready to be an entrepreneur. Now, the benefits of entrepreneurship are so substantial that I hope to God you go through it to get there. But um, you got to get out of the employee psychology, you know. If, if you're not getting the results you want, your market is sem sending you a message. And I'm telling you, like I'm the translator for your market. Your market's sending you a message saying, do more. Do more. Just like my t-shirt example. Your t-shirt sucks. 
you think it's badass. Your friends and family are like, holy shit, that's the dopest t-shirt I've ever seen. But then when nobody buys it, like the market chose against your t-shirt. And they chose the ugly t-shirt, which you and your family and friends think is hideous, but it's selling like crazy. The market does what it does. You know, I don't care what business you're in. You buy a stock and you think it's gonna skyrocket because you believe in the industry, but the masses don't and they sell it off and it collapses. Doesn't matter, the market's the market. The market is the market is the market and the market is the boss. The masses choose everything. All right, I flip a house. Who gives a shit what paint colors I like? What skylight situation, what shutters paint? I don't give a shit, my buyers do. Johnny and Sally homeowner make all the rules for what I do with my houses. What appliances I put in, what kind of granite, what level of this and that and the other I put in. They make all the choices, not me. I listen to what buyers love I talk to my buyers actually after the closing, hey, what'd you love best about the house? Implant that data and then I execute further and it's the constant refinement. Are my houses perfect? No, there's no such thing. But I'm constantly trying to refine and tweak to get the most return on my money. Maybe I weed out some shit that the buyers didn't care about, but I did. Maybe I add some things that I haven't been doing because buyers are talking about it. I don't know. You get my point? That's entrepreneurship. That's entrepreneurship. Listen to your market. Every successful thing you've ever seen, the market spoke and that entrepreneur listened and that's why they're making money and being successful, period. If you have too much pride where you're like, no, my t-shirt is the best, I don't care what anybody says, you're gonna lose. Like, it's just not gonna work because your opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion's worthless, so. Part of the reason entrepreneurs get whacked in the face too is because they, they grow up, especially in coddled environments sometimes where their opinion means everything, right? Family, friends, you say stuff and it's just your opinion is always held high with the people in your inner circle. Then you go out into the real world and you get whacked and you get whacked again and you get whacked again and you think, hey, what the hell, this world's bullshit. No, it's not. The world's the world, the, the masses are the masses, the people are the people and if they don't like your opinion, they're gonna say F that, I don't wanna listen. So, that's life, that's life. I'm not one to say the world is harsh, but my point is, it looks harsh if you've been coddled, if you and your voice and your opinion in your family inner circle has been coddled as you've grown up and you're always right and yeah, that's great and you're the best and blah, blah, blah. Like, believe me, I'm a parent. It's a tough, it's, I'm not a perfect parent. It's a tough tightrope to walk on. Cause it's like, you wanna like encourage your kids, but somehow you have to teach them that, hey, Sometimes mommy and daddy aren't gonna be here and you're gonna go out and someone's gonna hit you over the head and say, you suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or what you did sucks. Isn't that, I mean, isn't that something? You don't wanna think about that, Vidal. You're a parent too, obviously. I mean, it's like, you don't wanna like think about that, but that is reality. Like our kids are gonna step out into an environment and they're gonna get beat down verbally when they once were only encouraged by the people who love them. So, it goes the same for everybody in the world of business. Like you're gonna get shut down. You're gonna fail. Like the stuff I've lost on is insane. Seriously. Like I've lost so much money, so much time, and so much effort on things throughout the years. Cause I've done side projects and side businesses. I've just, I've done a lot of stuff, okay? But once you become immune to those um, losses and failures and I'm sick of this there's no such thing as failure there's only yes there is like failing is real it's a real word and it really happens and I've failed many times like I'm sorry but like the that's almost like it's all like own new age coddling I don't you, you get you hear a lot of this about there's no such thing as failure little Johnny don't worry about it you freaking failed that's okay like understand that failure is okay sitting down waving a white flag permanently because of that failure, that's a problem. But failing at something, big deal. I feel that more than I've succeeded at. Like failure means not succeeding. Like why are we like coddling people and like protecting their feelings about failure? You fucking failed. I've failed. Failure is temporary. That's what I've learned. Failure is extremely temporary. 
waving a white flag and saying, I'm defeated, that's a problem, okay? You will fail. Stop listening to everyone who says there's no such thing as failure, because guess what, there is. And the sooner you recognize that, the sooner you will succeed, okay? So there's my little rant for a second. We're going to look at a deal, then we're going to check on one of my other deals, and yeah, we're going on with it. That was some good content, Alito. The camera nod. The champion videographer nods the camera. That's what I like to see. And we're working on promoting this cool event, the Success from Scratch Summit, that should be coming up soon. I'm gonna keep that quiet. I'm not gonna say anything more about it because we're finalizing a few things, but stay tuned for that. You guys can come hang out with me personally, learn, have some dinner with me. It's gonna be kinda cool. If we do it, I think we're going to, but just stay tuned. It's a busy couple months we got with things. Anything else we don't that we should touch on? No? All right. Let's touch base in a minute. Mike? Yes, sir. Hey, how are you, man? Yeah, Good to meet you. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. It's my guy, Vidal. We'll take photos that way we don't have to write anything down. Okay. This is Mike. That's Vidal. Um, All right. All right. I want to give you this right away here. This is my card. Okay. Um, personal website, personal cell, references of people I bought homes from you can easily call. Okay. Things people write about me. I thought you saw me online too with the, the like video testimonials and stuff. Yeah. Just so you know how I operate. You know, okay. I like to give, instead of just saying, hey, here's my card, I like to give you more. Okay. Sounds can we take a quick look? I'll be fast, 10 yeah, minutes. That's fine. Sorry I'm a little behind. No, it's fine. Traffic was a little screwy. We, we've been out and about doing stuff anyway, so we're. Okay, you're from where again? I'm from here, I grew up here. This is the only house I know. Oh, uh, I live okay. in San Antonio now. Gotcha, right where it's nice and warm, okay. I'll follow you. Extra little garage entrance there? Uh, yes, we don't have a garage. We don't have a garage entrance from the garage to the oh, house. Oh, really? So that is that. Okay, so you get the groceries, you gotta do this. Mm -hmm. And there's one on the back side too, but. We'll yeah. take a look, okay. Okay, so as far as the stuff too, by the way, in the house. Um, That'll be taken care of on the fifth and sixth. Well, remember I told you to, so you're not, you don't plan on leaving anything? Cause you can is what I was getting at. Um, like, I don't care. What we leave will be bare bones of what we'll. Cause you're doing like an estate sale or something? Yes. Okay. All right. Now there's probably hardwood under here. Your, your, um, your sister was saying. Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, like I said, I grew up here. I have no idea. I've always owned carpet. So it's I always know. been covered. Yeah. Probably you'll need a refinish regardless. Right. It's hard to like pull up carpet and be like, Oh my God, gleaming yeah. beautiful. It usually like. She was, I think four when she moved here. And I was, this is the only house I know. So. Got it. Okay. The carpet's always, not this You carpet, grew up here. Huh? Period. Yeah. This is my life. So there's nostalgia going on here too, probably a little hard. Uh, it's gotta be a little hard, for right? For me, yes. For my dad, definitely, obviously. Yeah. Uh, this is the only house my mom and dad pretty much owned. Did they this buy it in like the 60s or something? Or? This is built in the 60s and they bought it in 71. Okay. I was like a newborn, so I was born Okay. I know, it time. like I told you, I specialize in these scenarios where like someone like him is moving out or someone, God forbid, passes away and the kids yeah, have to sell out. So. This is like all I do. How are you? Pretty good. I'm Nick. Jerry Gensky. Nice to meet you, Jerry. Lovely home you have here. Yeah. We're, we're just taking a quick browse through. We won't be long, okay? 50 years here already. <laughs> That's what I heard, yeah. yeah that's what I said. This is my house I know. I'm living with my baby. You're moving to Texas, huh? It's nice and warm. You can live your life. No more trouble. Oh my gosh. Nice yeah. Solid. I mean, we have snow. I think I've been there 20 years. We've had snow three times, period. There. There was snow in San Antonio? I wouldn't even think there. snow last, last year, actually. Last December. Really? Not a lot. I had enough to make a snowman, actually. It was what? Nice and tacky. I had my kids. Did the city shut snow. down? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, like, you don't have a protocol to combat snow in San Antonio. No, Texas believes that if the snow will go away as long as you got on it. As far as I know, this has got hardwood to it. Yeah. I would assume. I would I assume. I think that is. Like no, no, this is not. I know how these are built. That is, this isn't. Where's that other garage just entry, just so I can see? Because I know there's no entry here. We'll look outside in a minute then, I guess. Okay. So we have kitchen here. Okay. Um, got it. All right. It's not messy. We've seen messy and this isn't it. Trust me. We've seen messy. So it's one bath? Yes. Okay. Um, this is a 
another sink, although they pulled it out, put the countertop in, but it's still plumb. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. And then, uh, of course, shower bath and, yeah. It, okay. It's, it's got the little pocket door. Yeah. He has spares. He, he has a firm belief in having spares. Of everything? We have some there and we have some back behind you here, right? It's just like... The only other time I saw activity was I saw activity like this is when the house was kind of built on a spring. I've just never literally I've looked at a thousand crocs. I've never seen this. It's like the water's coming in so aggressively, but then it would be filling to be spit outside, and it's not doing that. You know what I mean? I have no idea why it's like that. I, don't know. I mean, you still hear that. That's yeah. I've actually and I've looked at thousand a thousand plus houses. I've actually never seen that. Honest to God.